This is a set of figures on a paper that I have been looking for for months now. I knew that it existed, but I hadn't read it in 30 or 40 years. And I couldn't remember the title. All I remembered was that it was authored by uh, Frederick Emmons Terman, the former dean of the engineering school at Stanford, who was a very famous uh, electrical engineer back in the 40s and 50s and 60s. The, uh, the specific article is called Output Transformer Response. And it appears in the January 1936 edition of Electronics Magazine. And so this video is going to be a bit different. Normally, I try to mix a little theory with a little uh, experimentation. But in this one, I'm just going to be reviewing this article. Because earlier I did some uh, videos on why tube amps sound different. And in there, I mentioned Terman and I used his uh, electronic and radio engineering uh, textbook, which contains these same figures. But that book was from 1955, and as you can see, this is from January of 1936, so it predates it quite a bit. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at what, uh, what Terman talks about here. And I warn you, if you're looking for some experiments, you might want to stop now and look for something else. I will be doing other experiments on different things, but this is just a paper review. Okay, as I pointed out, it's a paper called Output Transformer Response by Terman and Engelbretson. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but if I'm not, I apologize. January 36, Electronics. Let me zoom out just a little bit. The from In the very first sentence, uh, the authors write, the frequency range of an ordinary Class A power amplifier, and I've emphasized this part, depends primarily upon the primary and leakage inductance of the transformer. Now, understand, this is where I learned the importance of the transformer on the frequency response and phase response, too, though they don't talk about that so much here. But in this paper, the... There are three things that Terman talks about. Uh, well, you can reduce it to basically three concepts. One is called L1 prime, which is the combination of the uh, inductance of the primary and the reflected impedance of the secondary. Uh, the inductance of the secondary, reflected by multiplying by n squared, where n is the turns ratio. The second thing is the effective load resistance, and that is what you see looking into the transformer. And the third thing is the effective plate resistance of the tube. Later, the authors make the point that all transformers having the same leakage coefficient will cover the same number of octaves. And then they go on to talk about irrespective of the plate resistance and uh, as long as the ratio of the effective load resistance to the effective plate resistance is kept constant. And that's why I introduced these concepts up here. As long as the ratio of these two remains constant, the if a transformer has the same leakage coefficient, and that basically refers to the leakage inductance, leakage inductance in the primary and reflected leakage inductance in the secondary. Then, at the very conclusion, they say, to summarize, it's seen that the important constants of an output transformer are the primary and leakage inductances. And... <clears throat> Then they they all they finish with when these quantities together with the turn ratio, primary and secondary resistances are known, the frequency response 
of the output transformer can be readily calculated. Let me show you what they're talking about there with a blow-up version of the circuit reduced to unity turns ratio. In other words, this is what the tube sees. This is the tube. Mu is the amplification factor. ES is the, the input signal or the grid voltage. RP is the plate resistance of the tube. Now, uh, we'll look in, in a second at uh, some other things. Then, L1 prime is L1, th that's the leakage inductance of the primary, plus N2 times L2, where L2 is the leakage inductance of the secondary. So when you multiply by N2, it's reflected into the primary. So now it's just part of the primary. If you assume that the turns ratio is unity, in other words, one to one, now, you can adjust for any other turns ratio, but it's easier just to work from a unity turns ratio and then change your numbers based on the actual turns ratio. So this is the R, uh, I'm sorry, number of turns squared times R2, where R2 is the resistance of the uh, uh, of the transformer secondary, and then N squared times RL, where RL is the load resistance. So, what he, what he does is he finds the mid-frequency gain of this stage, and then he adjusts the gain for low frequency and high frequency based on these quantities, which are just the RMS, in other words, the square root of the sum of the squares of these two uh, values. Now, this is the equivalent circuit in the middle frequency range. Once again, reduced to turns or to unity turns ratio. Notice that it's just resistances and Remember, this is only a model, but what he's showing is that if you compute this model, that will tell you the effective gain of the stage at the middle frequencies. Then, this is the effective circuit at low frequencies. Notice that in this you have an inductor that shunts the the output of the tube. So unlike this one where the output of the tube flows through the leakage inductance and then through just resistors, in this the primary uh, inductance is a shunt. That's at low frequencies. At high frequencies, this is the equivalent circuit. Notice now that at high frequencies, the uh, effective leakage inductance is in series with this. This is just a simple series circuit. But you have to account for this, and remember that the impedance of an inductor changes with frequency. So just in this one, at high frequencies, and this at low frequencies, in, in the one case the leakage inductance is inserted in series, in the other the primary inductance is inserted in shunt. And from that, as he says at the conclusion, that if you know the primary and leakage inductances, you can compute the frequency response of a Class A power amplifier stage. Now, in this paper, he does not talk about variations in the load because of a speaker, and that is a factor. But as I showed in a previous video, it normally, at least in my experience, 
the it, it runs from around 5% to around 15% in most Class A amplifiers with reasonably good transformers and reasonably good speakers. So I thought that it might be interesting to uh, to those of you that are might be interested in this. And this slide is going to be really busy, so I'm not going to talk about the uh, much about it. Just sort of. Uh, point and prattle a little bit, but this is the low frequency response, this is the mid frequency response, and this is the high frequency response. And to compute all of this, you need to work with these various uh, constants. X is the primary inductance, X prime is the leakage inductance, uh, and R is the effective parallel resistance, same way, sum of the effective load and the effective plate resistance, and so on. I won't go through all of this because it's all in the paper, and if you're interested, you can download this paper, pardon bumping the, the camera, from the new world. RadioHistory.com website it used to be called the American RadioHistory.com website. So, if you're really interested in sort of the foundations of the effect of output transformers on tube output stages, I would refer you to this paper. It really set the stage for most of the work in uh, output transformers for the next 30 years, frankly, after this was published. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you've lasted this long, you, you, I can tell you are really interested in this, but as, as am I. Some, once again, would say obsessive. I always replace obsessive with curious. So, if you're a curious, dedicated person, I hope you got something out of this. If not, We'll look forward to some other video in the future where we'll maybe do a little more in the lab. In the meantime, have a nice day.